talking about benefits of being a sole proprietor. Sole proprietor is your best friend if you're a small business. And this is the best way to get your feet wet and test the waters, right? If you wanna test your product and your services, and uh, you want to do it with a sole proprietor. So let's get right into it, folks. What is a sole proprietorship, right? Also known as sole prop. Um, this is basically an entity uh, where you are the business. The business is you. You're running your business under your social, social security number. You don't need to register anywhere. So that's a plus for a sole prop. And uh, it's easy. You can report, report all your business income or losses in your personal income tax. So you don't need to file a separate business tax return. Uh, you can save money that way. And through the Schedule C um, and Schedule SE and common sole proprietorship examples can be like your Etsy shop or your massage or therapists or consultants, you're doing your business under your name, under your social. That's what it means to be a sole proprietorship. So some of the benefits I earlier mentioned, how easy it is. You don't need to go to Secretary of State and register. You don't need to register even. You just start, hit the ground running, start testing the waters, test your services and, you know, um, products and sell it and um, you just need to get a sales a sales tax permit and do the business under your name and, and get it going right um, the individual has complete control of the business so you are the business and so you have you know the profits and you're responsible for all your business debts and losses so this could be something you got to be careful with right so if something goes wrong, it's under your name, it's under your social. You've got to be responsible about it. So you can also operate under your name or file a fictitious name. So you can be Dan Kim and doing business as Dan Kim, or you could, you know, apply to get a DBA, right? That's a fictitious name. In Minnesota, they call it assume name and get that uh, business name to run transactions and you know uh, it's all feasible. And the sole discretion on business expense and business decisions, making transactions quicker and more flexible are all part of the benefits of being a sole proprietor. Let's continue with the benefits and don't have to keep incorporation records or annual corporate records or even biannual records, right? Uh, Minnesota, for example, has annual reports you have to do before December 31st each year. Biannual reports are in Iowa and some other states too, where you have to file and adhere to Secretary of State's requirement to keep your business active, updating your membership, updating your officers, updating your address, those type of things. And no formal business structure restrictions. I mean, corporations, partnerships are governed by specific rules and regulations, but sole proprietors, you don't have any. I mean, it could be a plus, it could be a, it could be a negative thing, but it's flexible. Uh, you don't have to set up payroll to pay yourself. I mean, just pay yourself. And it's easy to dissolve, obviously, because you never created it in the first place, right? So. You pay off all the business debts and obligations and close all your accounts, notify your tax authorities for tax purposes, all standard stuff. That's all you gotta do. More benefits. You can avoid the complications of corporate and the hassle of forming a corporation, filing a corporate tax return. It's easy to fulfill the tax reporting requirements for a sole proprietorship since it is with your individual filing. And um, yeah, you just file one tax return. There is a, just one schedule you, you gotta attach and it's the schedule C I mentioned earlier. 
there's no double taxation obviously for that reason you're doing straight tax return through your personal taxes and that's all you got to do and you can qualify um, for the pass-through uh, tax deduction established by the tax cuts and job acts if you have more questions you can you guys can reach out to us but up to 20 percent of net business income earned by sole proprietors may be deducted as an additional personal deduction you can get your money back and of course there are some limitations so you can consult your um, tax professional for more information guidelines for a successful sole proprietorship okay um, this is very important you want to keep your business and personal still separate okay you want to get that account with the business name you want you want to do your transactions separate. You want to keep your business business. You want to keep your personal personal. And you still want to keep it separate. Okay, it helps. And set aside money to pay taxes on any business income, uh, as well as self-employment tax. It's around 15%. And basically, that's something that you're going to need to pay if you're a sole proprietor. Um, if you're a single member LLC, you're probably familiar with this term self-employment tax because you also file a Schedule C under the 1040 personal taxes, right? So that's something that you're familiar with. It's basically your payroll tax. And obtain the necessary licenses and permits for your type of business. Earlier, I mentioned the sales tax permit. You still got to get it, right? Use tax. All right, if you are a restaurant, you gotta get your, yourself a food license, a liquor license. If you're a nail salon, you gotta get a salon license, right? Those type of things. You still gotta get it. You'll apply using your social, and, um, but you gotta get it. Understand the liabilities and risks of your business. I'll get back to this one about risks and hiring considerations. You can have independent contractors and employees and must abide by the employment, admin, record keeping and taxes. It's all still required, okay? Um, that doesn't go away. You're doing business, you gotta follow business rules. Now, earlier I mentioned, if you're a small business, um, Sole prop is your best friend. Uh, sometimes uh, your best friend can quickly turn into your enemy. <laughs> and sole prop is that way. And uh, let me tell you when to consider moving away from sole proprietorship and possibly creating yourself an actual entity like an LLC or a C-Corp or S-Corp. Those are some of the more popular uh, formation and entity structures that are available. But uh, when you're leaving a lot of money in the business for future expenses or expansion, or you have high inventory, et cetera, these are all signs that you want to consider um, actually creating an entity, okay? Um, you wanna reduce personally um, and the liability uh, for business debts and obligations. Um, this is kind of going back to that risk, right? And want to upgrade help and reduction of personal risk with other entities. Like if you do something and you get sued under sole prop, there's no corporate veil. You're just, they're just going to come after you and your dog. I mean, everything that you own. Okay. So, um, yeah, there's no limitations. Uh, there's no restrictions. Um, so that's why people create uh, legal entities like the LLC and the C Corp and the S Corp. And um, it's worth looking into. It's worth the money uh, if you start to look at the risk factor of things, okay? If you need a loan and banks are um, 
a bit hesitant to lend to soul props because soul props um, it um it shows that a lot of things that you are maybe more temporary okay it has a temporary feel and um if you are really done testing the waters and if you are confident about your product and your services and you want to pursue um, a greater height of a business achievement you you cannot do it with a sole proprietorship there's just too much risk so you want to create those legal entities to have some sort of limitation uh, in terms of risk. And you, when you're looking to find investors and partners, they're not going to do business with you as a sole prop. Yeah, they can't, it's impossible, right? Because sole prop is just about you, you and yourself, okay? So you want to pass on the entity beyond yourself to a seller. You want to have a formal entity. Want your business to be recognized as more formal and professional. You can't do it with a sole proprietorship. Okay. Again, sole proprietorship is more for you to test the waters, to get you started, have some flexibility along the way to test the market. And then you want to start thinking as soon as you become serious and you know this is it, you know this is where you're going to make it in business. And that's when you have to pull the trigger and create a formal uh, corporate entity. It could be an LLC, it could be a C Corp, it could be an S Corp, okay? And I know um, right now, uh, as we face this time with many, many states struggling with the economy, with the pandemic, more and more we will see an increase of audit. It's very natural, folks. Uh, when the state is struggling, the audit department gets very, very busy. And they might have proper reasons. They might not. You might just be unlucky and they'll find ways to audit you. But they don't just blindly audit people. They have a system and they work in ways in which they know their time in audit and the time that they are auditing you is worthwhile. So how do they know to go after those worthwhile entities? Well, sole proprietorship over the course of the years have proven itself to be the most audited type of business. And it makes sense, right? Because who are the sole proprietors? Those are the people who are more temporary. Those are the people who don't even register their business. And they, they tend to be a little bit more reckless, not because that they want to, but because a lack of information, a lack of professional guidance. And that's exactly why they get audited, okay? So if you are serious about business, then you, are wanting to take your business to the next level, you really want to pull that trigger earlier than later, especially in 2021 in this day and age where audit will be more prevalent in our business community, okay? So that's something to think about as we do business, as we start our business. So, you know, earlier today even, I had a phone call with a potential client and they were asking me, you know, I have two of these businesses and they're completely different in nature, in the business activity. Um, should I keep it together under my social? Because that's what I've been doing. 
or should I create an LLC for? Okay, so it goes back to the risk. All goes back to risk. My question to her was, well, do you want to take on the risk? Do you think you don't have any risk? And how big is the business? How big is business A versus business B? Do you want to keep it together? Because if you get audited for one, you're going to get audited for the other and you'll be audited for everything, right? So you're doing business under your social. You're not going to get away from personal, you know, audit, right? So in the case of another client, she has um, three different uh, S-Corps. She said, Dan, I'm paying three different tax, tax return. And, you know, they're actually by three different businesses and uh, business locations. But I actually do the same thing. We all have the same business activity. It's just, I like, I was told one time to keep it separate. So I kept it separate. So she was thinking of consolidating. She was thinking of bringing them all together, doing business under one. And I told her, well, it's up to you. Again, it goes down to risk, right? So if you have three different entities, and one of them goes down because it's getting audited and you know, um, it's hard to resume business if you're taking on audit on your own, right? I mean, if you have a CPA firm or someone else professionally helping you, then you, it's a different story. But um, yeah, then that business gets audited while your other businesses are fine and you can resume your regular business, right? So it's all about, do I want to keep all of my eggs in one basket or not? Do I want to take on the personal risk or not? And so this will prop, sole prop and the question of multiple entities or one entities or sole prop is just all boils down to risk. Okay. So I hope that was helpful uh, in understanding sole proprietorship and its flexibility and its obviously benefits that it has uh, versus actually creating another company or a formal uh, legal entity uh, to separate the personal risk uh, from business risk is all depending on, on risk and what you're willing to take on and how confident you are about your business, right? So um, I hope that is helpful and in helping you determine where you need to be, okay? And these business structures and sole prop, it is one of the business structure, is like a house you place your business in. Depending on um, what kind of house you're in uh, will determine how better you're protected or not, okay? And to go back to the, um, the audit situation and the audit risk management. Um, so sole prop is the most audited. Then it is the single member LLC. Why? Because single member LLC is just like sole prop. You file a schedule C under your personal taxes. And then it's your partnership then it's your S corp and C corp in that order. That's how IRS views the business growth cycle, okay? That's why all your Apple, Walmart, Wells Fargo, these large, large corporations are all C corp, okay? And so audit follows just that trend and starts from sole prop, single, LL, single member LLC, partnership, and S corp and C corp, okay? So I hope that was helpful.
helpful. And uh, I think we are closing in on our 30 minutes and I appreciate all your time and joining us today about this session to learn more about SoulProp and all of its benefits. And if you have any questions, shoot us an email and uh, call us and we are more than happy to further explain. And if you're looking to take your business to the next step and we are here to advise you and help you along the way. And um, yeah, we're here every day except for Sunday, Monday through Saturday and visit our website for any upcoming uh, webinars that we might have, but we're here because of you. We started this because of you and we're here because of you and we want all of you to stay safe during this pandemic. We're so close and uh, with the vaccine and I, I heard someone say and they um, and I want to share this funny little sign off. Uh, stay positive, uh, but test negative and I hope to see you guys soon. Okay, thank you all.